In this video, I will show you how to download DeepSeek, which is an open source large language model with reasoning capabilities and run it on your local machine completely for free with a nice graphical user interface. Now, as you might know, if you were to run DeepSeek on the web browser, you get access to the full model when you head over to chat.deepseek.com and you can directly interact with it over the web browser. But if you have privacy and data security concerns and would prefer to have offline access to these large language models like DeepSeek, what you can do is you can go ahead and download them and run them locally on your machine and you don't even need an internet connection. Once you have done the required configurations to run these models on your local machine and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. And we're going to download the train model or the model weights to our local PC. And there are actually a number of tools you can use for this process. And if you specifically want to make sure that even after you download DeepSeek and run it on your local machine, that you would still have a nice graphical user interface to interact with a DeepSeek model like this, instead of getting a very bland interface like the terminal window like this, which some of you might not really prefer, then you have to make sure that you use the right tool to manage your large language model on your local machine. And one such tool that you can use is LM Studio. Now, you can use LM Studio not only just to download DeepSeek onto your local machine, but also to interact with it with a nice graphical user interface like this. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to head over to lmstudio.ai. That's the official website from where you'd be able to download this LM Studio tool. And as it says right over here, you can use LM Studio to discover, download, and sort of run and manage your local LLMs quite easily and that includes models like Llama, Quen 2.5 which is the latest model from Alibaba and of course DeepSeek as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click over here download LM Studio for Windows because I'm using a Windows machine and once you have downloaded this application you're going to get the executable file like this which you can just simply double click in order to begin the installation process and I'm just going to go ahead and install this. And once the installation process is done, we can go ahead and click on finish. And that should open up LM Studio. And in its raw form, once you install LM Studio for the very first time, this is how your interface is actually going to look. Now, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to download the DeepSeek R1 model into our local machine. And to download a model, you can head over to this right over here, Discover, and from here, you're actually going to get access to a number of different uh, models like this. And from here, you would be able to access uh, DeepSeek R1 as well. So I'm just going to click on this, DeepSeek R1. Now, if you check this download options uh, right over here, you can see a bunch of different versions. Now, if you actually think about the original full-fledged DeepSeek R1 model, which is what you get access to when you try to use it in the web browser, that's actually over 400 gigabytes in terms of its size and probably it's going to consume a humongous amount of GPU memory, which uh, most of you might not really have access to. So that's why they actually come up with the different types of distilled models with the different amounts of uh, parameters. So I'm just going to go with this version right over here, which is actually only about 4.68 gigabytes, which I think my computer can easily handle. I'm trying to configure DeepSeek R1 on my laptop, which just has a simple GPU like NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti. So I have to make sure that I don't really stress it just too much. And because of that, we can actually go ahead with the a smaller distilled version of this DeepSeek R1 model and configure it on our local machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this. And as you can see, it's going to take a couple of minutes. And once the downloading process is finished, you're going to get a pop-up uh, like this. So if I go ahead and exit out from everything and head back to the main interface, now that knowing that I have already downloaded a specific version of the DeepSeek model into my local machine via LM Studio, if I just click right over here, you're actually going to see that model listed in here. To start running that model, all you have to do is just click on this and after that, we can just go ahead and load this model. What we have right in front of us is basically DeepSeek model, but it's being accessed via graphical user interface provided by LM Studio. So if I want to go ahead and chat with it, I can just go ahead and click on this 
create a new chat. And this actually looks like the types of interfaces that we are used to seeing from ChatGPT or from the original browser-based DeepSeek model. So if I were to just go ahead and say, tell me about yourself. And now you can see that we actually get uh, an output like this, which is typically what we are used to seeing when we interact with the web-based DeepSeek model. But right now, we're actually running the entire model completely locally on our local machine. So if I were to go ahead and maybe ask a question that's related to finance, let's say, can you recommend five ETFs that I should be paying attention to in year 2025? Let's see what kind of an, what kind of a response we are going to get. So you can see that it's actually running it through its thinking or its reasoning model. And as we expected, you can see that now it's actually recommending me different sectors from which we could uh, purchase different types of ETFs. And, and if you actually have used DeepSeek in the web browser, you get to see what it's thinking as it generates the output. And you can basically see the same over here, but it's just minimized. If you expand this part right over here, you can see what sort of a thought process or its train of thoughts that it's going through and applying logical reasoning before it spits out the answer like this. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? And well, again, just to reiterate, we're not really running anything on the browser. So you're completely secure and safe. We're just running a large language model using the resources, using our local resources in our local machine. And this is all great. And uh, just as the final question, if I actually try to get an answer for a coding related question, just, just to sort of see how it structures the code and uh, whether it actually spits out something very bland or whether it uh, nicely formats the code or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask DeepSeek to generate a simple Python code, do a simple machine learning task to classify the risk of an investment uh, using, let's say, support vector machine algorithm. Let's see what sort of a response it's going to generate for me. And it immediately recognizes what sort of libraries we are going to need for a task like this. And what I even had in mind, it was to actually use a library like scikit-learn, which is exactly what it uh, recommended right over here. And in addition to that, it also imports things like uh, modules to test the accuracy score classification report and uh, to generate the confusion metrics. And as you can see, it's not really talking about the input datasets or it's not really recommending me anything either. But at a high level, I can understand what's going on. And after that, we apply some scaling and of course, split the data set uh, after that into test and train uh, sets, initialize the support vector machine model. And after that, we train the model like this. And of course, finally, we do get things like uh, the accuracy score report and all sorts of stuff like that. And I can see it actually went through the general process uh, that one's expected to actually kind of follow through when doing a task like this. So I would say that it actually did a pretty good job uh, overall. It didn't really print out the code in a, in a very bland way. It actually formatted it correctly using different colors and stuff like that, which is exactly what I wanted to see whether this LM Studio can help me achieve when I'm running, when I run DeepSeek model locally on my machine like this.